Today, I'm going to do a quick unboxing and review of the Focusrite Scarlett 4i4 third generation USB C audio interface. I've bought this myself, so this review is not sponsored in any way whatsoever. This is one of the best selling audio interfaces out there. The Scarlett range, just like their previous models, are well known for good sound quality, good quality preamps, and low noise. They all come with a superb low latency ASIO driver, which makes recording a breeze. This is a great interface for beginners and professionals alike. The biggest difference between this and the cheaper Scarlett Solo is that it has more inputs and outputs, and unlike the Solo, this also has a separate volume knob for your headphones, as well as a loopback function, which I'll talk about more in a bit. When you open the box, you'll find the interface itself, a USB cable, and some documentation. The casing is made of metal, and the overall build quality feels pretty solid. It also looks quite nice. On the front, we have two XLR combo inputs, which means that you can plug in either microphones or guitars, for example. This will usually be enough for most people. If you're an EDM producer and mostly use VSTs and such, then you don't really need a whole lot of inputs and outputs. And in that case, a device like this is really all you need. Here's the gain knobs. And the 48 volt phantom power. Here's the volume knob for your monitors, and a smaller knob for your headphones, which you can plug in here. Unlike the Scarlett Solo, there is no air knob on the front. This has been moved into the software instead. Let's check out the backside. This is the security lock, which enables you to lock it in place to a structure. Then there's the USB-C connection and the MIDI in and out. Here we have four outputs and two inputs in total, so you can hook up two different pairs of studio monitors, for example, and the stereo input from a synth or whatever here. It's bus powered, which means that it gets its power through the USB cable. The driver will be installed automatically when you plug it in. You can easily change the buffer size from this menu or directly from your DAW of your choice. This audio interface comes with its own low latency ASIO driver, and I recommend that you use it in order to get the least amount of latency. It will also allow you to play back sound from your operating system while you're working in your DAW which can come in quite handy. Here you can set up the routing, adjust your monitors, headphones, etc. There's also a loopback function which allows you to record audio sources from within your computer, like from YouTube, for example. Make sure it's not muted and then select the playback here you'll see it says Software Playback 1 and 2. Then go to your DAW and select the loop input. Let's find a YouTube video to capture the sound from. Now just press record, and it's as easy as that. You can also select hardware inputs. Here you can adjust the sample rate, enable phantom power, etc. As I said earlier, the physical air button has been removed, but you can enable the effect here. The air function emulates the classic ISA 110 microphone preamp found on the Focusrite Studio console. It's a fully analog circuit, so there's no added latency when using it. As the name suggests, when turned on, it will add some more air and shimmer to your recordings. Besides that, we have the pad function. When enabled, it reduces the sensitivity back by 10 decibels. Great if you have particularly hot signals coming in. 
If there's a firmware update available for your Scarlet 4i4, then you'll get notified when you open the software. Here's a quick overview of the technical specifications. There's also an impressive amount of software bundled with this interface, such as Ableton Lite and hundreds of virtual instrument sounds and effects. So what do I think about the Scarlett 4i4 audio interface? Let's cover the pros first. It's very easy to set up and use, and the build quality is good. It also has more inputs than the more basic Scarlett Solo, which makes it a better choice for anyone who would like to record using two microphones at the same time, or one microphone and a guitar, for example. Another positive thing is that it's USB-C. The input gain is also slightly increased over the previous model. The loopback function can also be quite useful. It's relatively small and sturdy, so you can easily bring it with you. The audio quality is great, and the software is easy to use. There's also a separate volume knob for your headphones, unlike the cheaper Scarlett Solo. Now, what about the cons? Well, there's not a whole lot of negative here, but there are some minor things I've noticed. If I'm working on a huge project and I need to increase the buffer size to max, and then go back to Windows without changing it back, I do occasionally notice some minor sound crackling. The problem goes away when I change the buffer size back to default, though. I've noticed this with other USB audio interfaces as well, and not just on this computer. I've never experienced this with my old Firewire interface, though. So let me know in the comments if you've had similar experiences with USB interfaces. The only other negative thing I found with this is the placement of the volume knob for the headphones. It's very close to the monitor knob, and when the headphones are plugged in, it becomes a bit cramped in that area. It's not a huge problem, though. I just think the placement could have been a little bit more optimal. Another thing to keep in mind, and this isn't really a con, just something to be aware of with USB audio interfaces in general. They'll receive limited power from the USB port. So if you have a high impedance headphone, then you'll need an amplifier to drive them properly. This audio interface works with headphones up to about 200 ohms, and this will typically be the case with any USB-powered audio interface. Despite some minor annoyances, this is a very good audio interface overall, and I have no problem recommending this. I wouldn't have bought it myself if it wasn't any good. It's currently one of the best-selling audio interfaces in this price range, and for good reason. I'll put the Amazon link in the description below so that you can go check it out yourself. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and don't forget to subscribe and click the bell if you want to see more videos like this. Let me know if there's any particular video you would like me to make next. Thanks for watching.